All right. So this video is going to focus on how do we use synthetic division to find a quotient. Now, um, when it comes to synthetic division, there might be a couple of different things that you might be asked to do a synthetic division. The most typical general, just straight up, you know, use synthetic division, divide. Um, they could possibly ask you, uh, how do you know if there's a remainder or not? you know when you divide, does it divide evenly or is there going to be a remainder? There's actually a way for you to tell in this kind of problem. Um, another reason why you might be using synthetic division is when it comes to a lot of different things with equations, with graphing and with solving, when we have equations, um, for example, maybe something like I have right over here, is I have this equation that's raised to a third power. And if I wanted to solve this, this would be kind of difficult to solve just because it's a cubic equation. Now, if I did not have this first term, if it was just 5x squared plus 6x plus 5, I can solve this by trying to factor. I can solve this by trying to put it in the quadratic equation. You have a few more options on actually solving this for x. But once you start having higher powers, something to the third, the fourth, the fifth, it makes it a lot more difficult to solve the equation. So what we tend to do is we use synthetic division. And what synthetic division does is it kind of lets us lose a power each time we use synthetic division. If we did this synthetic division for this equation I have here, by the time we were done dividing, this would be an x squared equation which would actually work in my favor because I can hurry up and do a quick division, get it to an equation that's raised to the second power, and then I can figure out, do I want to factor, do I want to use a quadratic formula, or whatever to wrap up the rest of the problem. So you can see it's used with a lot of different things. Um, I just wanted you a little bit familiar, just depending on why you're needing to know this, what kind of questions your teachers might be asking you uh, to do with this. The first thing that I mentioned, is it actually divisible? Are you going to have uh, a remainder or not? So if that's what you want to know, quick thing to do that, take a look at your denominator and take the opposite sign of the number you have here. So for example, I have a positive 3. I want to take the opposite sign and do a negative 3. If I took my numerator and I plugged a negative 3 in 4x and simplified this, so real quickly, if we were going to simplify this, negative 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. 14 times negative 3 is a negative 42. Then you have that plus 15 at the end. If you calculate this, you actually get a 0. So when you plug in the opposite number of your divisor uh, into your numerator, if you get a 0, that means it is going to be divisible. It's going to divide out evenly. You're not going to have a remainder. So that's how you know if you have a remainder or not. Right? Take the opposite number in your divisor, plug it in for x into your numerator. So otherwise, whether we're asked to do synthetic division or whether we are trying to take a cubic fourth fifth power equation and lower it in its power, regardless, we are going to now have to do synthetic division uh, to do that. So the way that we set up the synthetic division, again, we're going to work with our divisor and we want the opposite sign of that. So the opposite of a 3 is a negative 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put the negative 3 in its own little corner over here. And what I want to do on the right of it right here is I want to take the coefficients of every term in my numerator. The coefficients would be 3, 14, and 15. So I have a 3, a 14, and a 15. And this is the way synthetic division works. The first one here. Okay, so 3, 14, and 15 are the coefficients of our equation. So your first number is always going to drop down. This 3 is just going to drop down. That's the first step, drop down the first number. Now what you do here on off, you're going to take that 3, multiply it by your divisor. 3 times negative 3 is a negative 9. Put that under your, uh, your second number. All right. And then what we want to do is we want to add that column together. 14 plus negative 9. Well, if we have $14 and we spend 9, we have 5 left. Okay. And then we're just going to repeat this. We have a 5. Let's multiply it to our divisor, which is a negative 3. So 5 times negative 3 is a negative 15. So the result you always put in the next column, and then you add. 
When you add that, 15 plus negative 15, you get a zero. Now, we already did test in the beginning when we plugged in that negative 3. We saw that we were going to get a zero, which means it does, does divide out evenly. Um, what that tells us for our answer, remember um, these 3, 14, and 15 we grabbed from our coefficients of our equation. So down here, essentially your answer, our result, this 3 and this 5 are going to be our new coefficients. And when we start writing the equation, we, we want to start writing it from right to left in an equation. So if we look at an equation from right to left, you have your number first, then you're going to have your x to the first power term, then x to the second power, and if you have more numbers, your next one would be x to the third, x to the fourth. So the way that that looks like here, this zero goes off. This five is going to be our first number, which is a constant for our equation, and it is a positive five. This three, remember the second thing that you have is the x to the first power. So that means that this three needs to go in front of an x to the first power. And I don't have any other numbers here in my answer, so that means I'm actually done. And it makes sense because remember I told you when you use synthetic division, you're going to lose, you're going to drop down a power for your equation. So we started with 3x squared plus 14x plus 15, and our result, we started with an x squared, we're going to end with an x to the first because you're always going to lose a power. So our answer is 3x plus 5 when we use synthetic division here. Otherwise, that's it for this video.